Welcome to the last lab in BME 308 for 2021. In this video, we'll be building an EMG amplifier. EMG stands for electromyography. The way it works is that our muscles are controlled by electrical signals sent from our brain down through our central nervous system um, and into the muscles that tell the muscles when to contract. So if we were to say zoom in on um, our uh, bicep here, so here's our arm and here's my hand. <laughs> um, the, the bicep is a convenient muscle um, because it really has just two endpoints that make our um, arm move back and forth. We can do EMG sensing with other muscles, but bicep is a good one to start with. So from uh, our brain, the nerve innervates um, from our neck down through our shoulder, through our arm, and the nerve enters our bicep and then uh, branches out through the muscles, uh, the, the muscle fibers in our bicep. Those signals come down as kind of discrete pulses. Um, the faster the pulses, the more often the pulses, the harder we're trying to contract. That signal comes out um, maybe as a voltage versus time, as these kind of discrete pulses. And as we try to uh, flex harder, we get more and more of these pulses. We can pick those up on the surface of our skin using electrodes, the same that we used in ECG, and amplify them with an instrumentation amp and filter correctly to try to get an average for that signal, turn it into a voltage that we can then use as um, some kind of voltage that's proportional to the amount of flex or the amount of force in our muscle. So let's try to build that. We'll take two electrodes and place them on our bicep, which I've done that here to my bicep. And it's what's interesting is the, the nerve comes in and innervates our bicep, um, probably around one third in from the bicep, and then the nerves travel down the muscle length. So the pulses, the electrical pulses coming from our nerves are kind of pulsing with time. So if we looked at this point versus time versus this point of time, the pulse hits this one before it hits this one as the wave travels through my muscle. So if we compare this voltage to this voltage, as the wave travels and the spike hits this one, we'll get a positive signal, and then it will leave that signal and hit this one and we'll get a negative signal. So if we compare these two voltages in the instrumentation amp, we'll get a positive spike and a negative spike for each spike that my brain sends down. And there'll be a lot of them, so if we kind of integrate them with time by filtering them, uh, we can make some kind of signal that changes in amplitude as I flex my muscle. Then we'll have to change that signal that changes with amplitude. Um, so it's kind of like a sine wave that gets bigger and smaller. We'll try to grab the peaks of that sine wave or a usable signal that changes from around zero to five volts as I flex my muscles. Uh, this is the last lab. I don't want to just draw it for you. Um, so let's do some kind of pseudo uh, circuit design. So I have two electrodes coming from my uh, arm and uh, they're placed along the length of my muscle, not next to each other. Otherwise they'd see this, probably the same signal at the same time. And then I've also got a ground on my elbow. You want to choose kind of the bony part, not much uh, skin or flesh or muscle there because we're trying to pick up just this um, muscle signal. And we're also trying not to pick up any ECG, the one hertz spike from my heartbeat, because uh, that would also be kind of confounding. So we're just trying to pick up my bicep. So we've got uh, my elbows going to ground, and it doesn't really matter which is the plus or minus uh, coming from my um, elbow, but that will go into our instrumentation op amp. And I will pick a gain resistor um, RG for maybe a gain of 100. We're using the AD623 instrumentation op amp in this class, um, which starts to have its own natural low pass filter if the gain gets too big. So um, we'll stick with a smallish gain here and then use filters and more op amps later on to make the signal bigger. I will have the reference pin um, be ground. And I have a, a plus five and a minus five volt supply. So the signal on my output um, should have a mean of zero and go up and down to maybe plus or minus five, depending on my gain. Um, now, of course, I might be floating relative to the world. So the first thing we want to do is high pass that signal. 
um, so that uh, the, the mean out of the high pass is zero volts. And we'll have to choose a frequency for that. We'll do that in a second. And we should uh, probably amplify that, make a gain. Um, we don't really necessarily know what that should be yet, but maybe we'll do it in times 10, times 100, times 1,000, I don't know. And then we'll probably do a, um, uh, maybe we'll just, we'll leave it there. Um, so I will uh, sample that on, say, channel one of my end scope. Now, how do you choose a high pass filter frequency and how do you choose the gain? These are things you might have to adjust with time, but we could take a rough first stab at it. Uh, we're definitely trying to get rid of one hertz components from my heartbeat from the ECG. So we want the high pass to be above one hertz so that we don't see any heartbeat signal. And if you've ever looked at, I don't know, any of this kind of stuff in another biomedical engineering class before, you'd see that the EMG signal is something in the hundreds of hertz. So let's choose our high pass to be, I don't know, around 10 hertz. And we can adjust later on. That's just our first initial guess. So we'll remove anything below one, uh, 10 hertz. And we'll keep everything in, at this point, and at, later on we'll add some low-pass filters. Um, and my gain, after a uh, gain of around 100 in the instrumentation op-amp, um, was another 100. Of course, um, my muscle might be bigger than yours or smaller than yours, and that acts as a natural amplifier to the signal. So you might have to go with a gain of 10 or 1,000, depending on how much muscle mass you have. So I'm going to hook this up, and we will take a look at the signal at this point. I'll show you right now. Um, I am not hooked up to my Enscope, and my computer is charging. So I have uh, probably a huge 60 hertz component going on. I'm going to unplug my laptop so I don't get as much 60 hertz, and then I'm going to uh, ground myself and hook up the electrodes. Okay, so we see uh, some kind of fuzzy signal, and if I flex, it gets bigger, and if I stop flexing, it goes back down again. So I flex, and I unflex, flex, unflex. So what we see here is we essentially have a signal that's white noise, um, and the amplitude of the noise gets bigger as I flex, and the harder that I flex. Let me demonstrate to you on camera. Uh, sure, my big muscles here. So when I talk about flexing, I'm not moving my arm. When I move my arm, the electrodes are moving around on my skin and I'm not getting a great signal. So when I say flex, I mean I'm flexing my muscle. I'm doing uh, I don't know, isometric contraction here. I'm not letting my arm move, but I'm creating force. You can also try to do something like this where I'm pushing my hands together to create that force in my muscle, or I can try to lift my table. But I don't want my arm to move. I only want to create force in my muscle. Okay, we'll show you that one a few more times. There we go. So I flex and I unflex, I flex and I unflex. My goal is to not really, I don't really want this signal to hit plus and minus five. Because if it does, my FFT later on um, is going to be uh, not correct because the signal is trying to be above plus and minus five, but will hit plus and minus five, it'll rail that square edge as it hits the plus and minus five, uh, will create harmonics. Okay, so basically I want to make my gain big enough so that I don't have to flex too hard. I don't want to stress out my muscle, and the more I fatigue myself, the worse my signal is going to get. I'm going to flex kind of lightly and still get up to, say, almost plus and minus 5, but not quite hitting plus and minus 5. Now, after I do this, um, I want to run some Python code to collect this data and then generate what we call a spectrogram, which is kind of like an FFT versus time. So here is some Python code that does that. Um, I'm using matplotlib to show the plot. I'm using numpy to do uh, my spectrogram and FFT. First, I'm going to open up my Enscope. So my Enscope uh, app has to be closed. Um, I'm going to collect data at 4 kilohertz. I'm going to get 2 seconds worth of data, so that means 8,000 data points. I'm just going to save it directly into an array. I'm not going to try to analyze this in real time. And I'm going to print before I start that the data collection has started. And then when I'm done, I'm going to say this collected. And that's going to tell me that, um, so over the course of this two seconds, I'm going to wait half a second after I see the data is collected. Then I'm going to flex for one second, and then I'm going to unflex so that in the middle of my data, I've got like one second of flexing surrounded by two half seconds of not flexing. This could take a couple tries. Um, then I'm going to make a time array, assuming that the data was collected at that 4 kilohertz, which it should have been, because that's what I told the Enscope to do. I'm going to plot it. And then I'm going to do a spectrogram. 
So um, the key thing here is, you know, add this line that says the data is about to be started and collected, so you know when to flex. And what this will generate is the following graph. The top is my voltage versus time. Um, so we can see the, the mean is zero. Uh, I've got some white noise essentially. And then when I flex, uh, the signal goes up and down, doesn't quite hit plus or minus five. And when I stop flexing, it goes back to, to almost zero again. At the bottom, here is a spectrogram. So the spectrogram on the y-axis, uh, this is frequency. And the x-axis, this is time. And the brightness of the pixel represents the magnitude of the voltage at that frequency at that time. So when we're looking at the first uh, quarter second of my data here, I'm not flexing. So I've basically got white noise. I have an equal representation of probably every frequency, um, the, the same magnitude every frequency. So or in this area, we see um, some frequencies are a little bit bigger than others. Um, but in general, we've basically not gotten no signal. Um, between half a second and 1.25 seconds, we see I flexed. And we get a lot of energy in this lower ba band between 0 and 250 hertz. So that must be where all the content of the sine waves, or really the, the peaks that are coming from um, my brain to tell my muscle to flex, that's where all the data is. And then I stop flexing and it goes away. We see an interesting band at a kilohertz here and another maybe at 1500 hertz. That might be uh, aliasing due to my sample ray or um, some other, you know, one kilohertz frequency, maybe my fan on my laptop's running at that frequency. So that's probably noise. Okay, so try to get this graph, uh, this voltage versus time, and then generate the spectrogram. Um, and what the spectrogram will do is it'll help you choose some filters coming up. So we basically know there's no interesting uh, signal above, say, 250 hertz. So I can choose uh, my high pass at 10 hertz seems to be correct. You can choose a low pass. 250 hertz depends you know on your specific signal um, and then i'll know where to go from there so uh, at this point i've got a uh, voltage whose mean is roughly zero and when i flex it gets bigger and when i stop flexing it goes back down so what do i want to do with this signal i would like to uh, turn that into the following signal um, that just goes up when I flex and goes back down. So basically, I want to find the peaks of all of these sine wave-ish noise type things that are happening and keep them around for a little while. Um, and uh, maybe I amplify them and filter them so I get a nice smooth signal out. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to take this voltage and we need to do something like peak detection. Uh, there's a variety of ways to do peak detection, but one is uh, rectification, followed by a low-pass filter. After we do this, we might choose to do another, say, low-pass filter, and then maybe another gain, all depending on how big our signal is until we get to this final desired voltage. Um, rectification is a process that uses uh, diodes. So we'll go back to using a diode. So we'll take our signal, so this signal that we've seen on channel one, we're going to put into a diode. The diode says I will only let current flow through myself when this voltage is 0.6 volts bigger than that voltage. So what I'll do, I'll put a, a capacitor here. Capacitor maybe initially has zero volts on it. As I flex, this voltage will go to maybe one volt. That means that 0.4 volts can transfer over here because I lose 0.6 across the diode. Now I've got 0.4 volts across a capacitor. It would stay there forever, but I could bleed it off by adding a resistor in parallel. So this is kind of like a low-pass filter. When I flex uh, to one volt here, I get 0.4 volts here. When I stop flexing, this goes back down to zero. But the 0.4 can't transfer back that way because of the diode, so it's kind of stuck there. And then depending on my time constant for this R and C, the 0.4 will die away. So um, I will have um, this uh, spiky signal, spike, spike, spike when I flex, and uh, I'll get up here, and then I'll decay, and then I'll decay away. So at this point, I can then low pass that signal so that it becomes a little more smooth. And because I've lost some ampl amplitude, I might amplify it again. 
So that's my low pass and my gain until eventually I get to the signal. Let's take a look at that on n scope. Wire fell out. A lot of signals seem to go away. Okay, so there's my uh, raw voltage versus time after instrumentation amp, high pass, and another gain. Turn on channel two. And this is, let's see, um, after, uh, after my rectifier and first low pass filter. Zoom in a little bit more at the time. Here you can see as I flex, it's kind of keeping the peak and then decaying away. It's not going to quite the max of the peak because I've lost some uh, due to my diode. My own flex. <laughs> okay, and then the last thing I do is I add some amplification. That again. Three. In this case, actually, I didn't add any amplification. Um, I only low pass filtered. Okay, Enscope just wants to keep crashing. But I'll let you figure out the last part of this circuit. So after your uh, peak detector, um, figure out what works for you. Depending on how big this signal is, you might need to amplify and then low pass. You might need to just low pass. You might want to buffer and then low pass. You might want to buffer, low pass, amplify. Um, if your signal seems to have a mean after this that's not quite zero, so if it's kind of here and goes up when you flex, but it never goes back to zero, um, go back, look at that high pass, um, and go back and look at the peak to peak of this voltage here when you're not flexing. Um, that amount of energy is probably determining this level here, especially after this gain. Um, so you might need to decrease some low-pass filters to uh, penalize those higher frequencies and noise to decrease this. But that, of course, will make everything smaller, so then you need a bigger gain. So there's going to be lots of trade-offs here between low-passes and high-passes and, and amplification steps. So have fun with this design. Uh, build uh, you know, the, all, all these things. Test it on your muscle. And watch the next video. We're going to use this signal to play a game in Python.